Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 12th August 2022. So let's get started with our discussion. And if you see here, you can see one section that is summary of the session. So what you are going to get after listening to this video completely. So you are going to get one quote, editorials of Hindu and some articles from Hindu and even you are going to cover some other important articles from other sources like Indian Express, PIB etc. And we are also going to give you some mains practice questions and prelims practice questions at the end and we are also focusing on vocabulary. So now let's get started with our session without any late and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is the roots of all goodness lies in the soil of appreciation. So if you have the habit of appreciating, yes, then you can you can grow the roots of goodness. Okay, so appreciation is very, very important. And even you need the appreciation. Okay, so now let us try to see some important topics. So here we are going to see seven topics in this video. So now let us try to see the first topic. It is regarding the a timely gesture. So this article it is talking about tax devolution. Okay, already we discussed about this topic in our yesterday's lecture. So again, we are going to see what is this article talking about. And we are going to see some detailed analysis of this topic. And we are focusing on especially significance. So whatever the thing that we discussed in our yesterday's lecture. So we are going to add one dimension. So this dimension is about, we are going to add about. So what is the significance of this tax devolution? So how it's going to help the states? So this article is very important and this topic is important from your GS paper 3 under economy point of view. So now let us try to see this topic in detail. So here this article is especially talking about tax devolutions. So already we discussed about yesterday article 280 of Indian constitution which talks about the devolution. And in the yesterday's lecture we said about so which are the revenue sources for the states from the center. Okay, there we discussed about this tax evolution and the grants, etc. Correct? So, here especially why it is in news? So, recently our union government, okay, our union government, government of India released rupees 1.16 lakh crore rupees to the states, okay, 1.16 lakh crore rupees to the state and it is equal to the two monthly installments. It is equal to two monthly installments actually because of release of this uh, amount by this union government because of this this is the news so if you see some important details regarding how much amount of funds are released so union finance ministry transferred two installments together and it is like rupees 1.16 crore rupees okay okay that is like 1.16 la uh, 1 lakh 16,665 crore rupees Okay, it is against the normal monthly devolution. So all, uh, so if you see the normal monthly devolution, it will be like fifty-eight. Uh, okay, fifty-eight thousand crores. But now it released like one point one six lakh. That is about twice. So it is like a two installments together. They released by this union government. So according to the report of this ICRA, it mainly stands for Investment Information Credit Rating Agency of India. So according to this. ICRA report so the tax devolution by union government is likely to increase to rupees 9.3 lakh crore so it will exclude it will mainly exceeds our budgetary estimation so our budgetary estimation is like rupees 8.2 lakh crore so you know it is going to increase the sum so this outlay will going to increase our budgetary estimation right so which state which is going to get the highest amount so highest amount is received by this up and second will be by bihar so at present according to this 15th finance commission recommendations it said that 41 percentage of tax evolution should be done so here if you see this infographic already we discussed this infographic in yesterday's lecture so first state okay state which is going to get the large amount of the devolution will be up and least amount is goa and you have to see where your state stands so this will be important from your interview point of view as well so now let us try to focus on what is the significance so what is the importance so how states are going to be get benefited so if you see significance so the advanced release of this tax devolution uh, that will helpful for for especially ease or relaxation from the fiscal pressures 
from the physical pressures they are mainly faced by the states yes states you are facing some physical pressure so that pressure can be relaxed or eased by this their tax devolution and next one here is as per our goods and services act of 2017 it said that so we are going to promise state gdp will be like 14 percentage so if there is any shortfall happens means yes there will be compensation that comes under this gst compensation so to provide this compensation from the center to states so central government came up with this gst compensation act of 2017 Correct. So here actually at that time they promised it that they are going to give compensation for 5 years not beyond this. Okay. As per this GST Act of 2017 states they were guaranteed compensation at a compound rate of 14 percentage. They said that yes we are going to provide state GDP will be like 14 percentage from the base year 2015 to 2016 so if you are comparing with the 2015 to 2016 and the growth rate of state should be like 14 percent is or mainly set by the center and if there is any losses so there will be the compensation will be provided by this union government for the time period that is five years so it came to end on june 30th 2022 so recently we had the seventh meet of niti ayo governing council so in this uh, Niti Ayo Governing Council meet, chief ministers, they raise their concerns regarding the shrinking of resources and they are mainly asking for more funds from the union government and even extension of this GST compensation period as well. So these are some important highlights already we discussed that topic. And if you move forward here, given that projects and capital spending require a considerable lead time. And even early reassessment of devolution amount being shared with the states with the help uh, with the help uh, okay that will help to boost them their capital spending. So whenever states you are getting this type of uh, tax devolution means that will be helpful for creation of infrastructure that is either roads or any developmental projects or schools or private or some healthcare infrastructure. So that will be helpful for creation of the. In, uh, creation of the infrastructure so that mainly comes from this capital spending okay and a large part of tax devolution was paid out to the states in this fourth quarter's previous years okay so that led to decreasing of state government borrowings so these are the about the some significance regarding this tax devolution and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding criminal procedure identification act of 2002 2022 so here you have to focus on what is this criminal procedure identification act and you have to see what are the three provisions and what are the objectives so this will be enough from your mains point of view and this topic will be important from your gs paper to under politan governance and this topic is exclusively important from your mains so there is very less relevance of this topic from your prelims so now let us try to see context why it is in use here criminal procedure identification act a criminal procedure identification act of 2022 so it provides legal sanctions for law enforcement agencies so law enforcement agencies now they can take the measurements of convicts so you can ask which types of measurements for example you can take their your biometric data and you can also take their height etc okay so now they can take this measurements of convict and even other per persons for the purposes of identification and investigation the criminal matters so if there is any murder happened for example i hope you have watched the cid series okay cid series is present in both hindi and as well as in telugu and also in some regional languages so if you have watched that cid series so you can understand how cids they will do investigation finally they will catch this culprit correct so in that area so yes they will take in some dna fingerprint dna and they will be take, collecting some samples from them from the people uh, from, uh, from the people right so where they are getting some doubt so from that people they are going to collect some size of for example i watch number of cid series and i'm a big fan of that uh, so here uh, i uh, i can remember like so if they found one shoe in that area so they will be also if who are the persons 
who are on whom there is a doubt so they will be taking the size of that um, leg as well and even they will be taking some samples of the blood and some hair samples to find this dna whether their dna is matched with that or not so in this way now this criminal procedure identification act of 2022 which uh, which mainly gives a power okay which mainly gives the legal sanctions for this enforcement agencies now for taking the measurements of the convicts and the other persons for the purpose of identification and investigation of a uh, criminal matters so while the legislation was enacted earlier this year so ministry of home affairs notified it to come into effect from august 4th so it is going to be come into effect from august 4th 2022 so this is the thing which mainly said so if we are talking about the objectives of this criminal uh, procedure okay criminal procedure identification act of 19 no, so to, sorry 2022 so here what are the objectives so why we came up with this act so first one here is so it will help uh, it will mainly provide some uh, some power for this enforcement agencies and they can go for collecting of information and that will be helpful for prevention and as well as detection of crime and it will be also helpful in crime solving technology so here it will also helpful for upgrading of this crime solving technology so that here crime can be solved in the less time period such that we can ensure proper justice that is provided and next one here is that will also helpful for the maintenance of law and order as well okay so these will be the important objectives and if you are talking about what are the key provisions of this act so first one here is so here this act which authorizes the police and prison authorities to take measurements of convicts okay especially you can talk about fingerprints you can talk about height you can talk about height of the fingers or you can talk about length of the leg foot etc so here here authorities uh, this um, this authorities like this law enforcement agencies they can now collect the measurements of the convict and even other uh, other people so it will be helpful for identification and investigation process as well and one more thing here is so this act does not mandate the compulsory recording of all measurements for all types of offenses for all types of offenses it is not saying that we need to like we need to compulsorily record all these measurements and second one is repeals the old act so here the act seeks to repeal the identification of prisoners act that is ipa of 1920 whose scope was limited to recording measurements which includes finger impressions foot impressions and also certain convicts and as well as non convict persons so what are the old act is present so this our uh, old act that is ipa identification of prisoners act of 1920 so this uh, having a limited scope under this here law enforcement agencies they can go for only collecting of finger imprints and as well as foot imprints but it is not like that and next one here is it also broadens the scope of the measurements so now here under this new act so there is a large scope of taking the measurements for example they can take finger impressions palm prints and as well as food impressions photographs iris scan and as well as retina scan and some biological samples like blood okay or hair okay they, from there we can get the dna and next one is even handwriting also okay so this is the one important thing and next one here is to so this act which also says about the punishments okay so it it also does away with the condition of an offense being punishable by at least one year or more of imprisonment for the measurements to be taken okay and it also talks about this punishment also so it only grants exemption in the form of mandatory consent for biological samples except in the cases where the accused is arrested for sexual abuse of women and as well as children or for an offence carrying a minimum punishment of 7 years so minimum punishment here is 7 years which is mainly said in this act and next one here is it also talks about the records of juveniles juveniles means we can say like children who are committing the crime okay and they are not adults so they are below the age okay below the age of 18 years so the act does not exemptly bar taking measurements of this juveniles yes juveniles measurements they can also be taken for example if you have watched some movies especially in uh, telugu we have rakshasudu movie and there are uh, anusuya movie so there are number of movies which talks about the serious uh, serial killers so in the serial killers uh, so we can see even 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 small minors they will be going for this uh, killing 
okay right so here we can't ex we can't also exempt them from the society so here from the juveniles also we can take the measurements so they might be future uh, they will become the serial killers right so the provisions of the special act juvenile justice act of 2015 regarding destruction of uh, records of conviction under the act shall apply okay so for this juveniles also this will be applies so this is about this topic in detail and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding jem jaisha mahmud deputy chief and the name of that person is rauf asker okay so i want to uh, tell you about this person in brief actually who is this person so actually he belongs to one terrorist group that is jaisha mahmud right so here he is a brother of this jaisha mahmud chief that is masood asar Okay, so he is brother of this Masood Asar and he also involved in the planning and execution of some terror attacks in India. So he planned and executed IC 814 hijacking and he mainly did this to free this Masood Asar and he also involved in this uh, parliament attack and terror strikes in security forces in this Pulwama and other regions in the India. And this one here is he also wanted for organizing training camps and also he also focused or he also involved in this fundraising drives and coordinating with this elite lashkar e taiba and anti-india attacks and this one here is he also arrested in pakistan in 2010 as a part of national action plan on terror and convicted for this terror finance okay so this is about the brief background of this sort of askar so now let us try to see this topic and this topic is important from your gs paper too under international relations so now let us try to see this topic actually here we have to focus on why china is opposing india's move so here china on thursday opposed or thwarted okay thwarted a joint india us bid to list this jaishir uh, jaishi mahmud deputy chief that is raf asgar okay asgar as a united nations security council designated terrorist by placing a technical hold on the process a move India called that is politically motivated and evidence of this China's double speak okay double speak on Pakistan based terrorism so here why it is in news because here China which mainly said that we are not going to accept with this joint move of India and US because here Daisha Mohammed deputy chief that is Rav Afskar okay they want to designate as a terror under this United Nations Security Council but here China which is not accepting this so because of this India called this move as a political motivated move and now let us try to see some details it mainly says that so this person that is Rav Af uh, Asghar so he is the brother of uh, Jaisha Mohammed leader that is Masood Mo Azhar and he accused for masterminding of number of terror attacks in India for example, AC 184 hijacking in 1999 and parliament attack in 2001 and even the number of attacks of uh, security forces personnel from 2014 to 2019. Okay, so because of this, this is the news and actually even national investigation agency or national intelligence agency which mainly made or filed a charge sheet on this Pulwama terror attack okay which happened in this 2019 so in which 42 crpf persons they had lost their life and it also names about this of asgar and masood asar hand behind this attack so if talking about what is the chinese response here chinese response says that they are go not going to accept this okay so it is not for the first time even when we designated this uh, masood asar as a terrorist so at that time also here china stopped this move or resisted for this move and next topic here it is about langya virus so dozens of china infected with this langya virus found in this shoes shoes means nothing but they are like this type okay they will be like uh, belongs to the rat family the student family so this article will be important from your gs paper to under science and technology and this topic will be important from your prelims point of view not from means so now let us try to see this topic in detail so if you see why it is in news first of all dozens of people in china they have fallen ill okay within because of the new virus threat also found that is seen in the shoes so this report said that there is no so far human to human transmission there is transmission which is mainly uh, occurring from one human to another human that is we can see there is a transmission of the disease from one person to another person so dozens of people in china they have fallen ill with a new virus that also found in the shrews a report has said okay there is no human to human transmission 
So if you see some details, it mainly says that. So the infections, they were found in China's eastern Shandong and central Henan provinces. And here in this region, it mainly affected about 35 people according to the report. And the virus is called as Langya Henipa virus or Levi. Okay, you can remember this Langya Henipa virus or Levi. And the patients who reported the symptoms, like for example, they reported fever, fatigue, cough, nausea, and as well as headaches. And some people, they also developed here even blood cell abnormalities. And they also face some Ill, uh, impaired liver and kidney functions, etc. And the research findings they show that here these shoes are the natural reservoirs of this pathogen. So this is that lung Levy virus, okay. And here in this uh, Shenan and Asla Shadow, so here we can see there is a spread of this, okay, virus. And if you are talking about some facts regarding this Levy, Levy it is example of zoonotic Henipa virus. And the virus is uh, belongs to this Henipa virus family. So two species they have been identified before. That is Hendra virus, and it is a first detected in the in the Brisbane suburban region. Okay, so it is mainly found in this suburban region. Okay, it is also or uh, it is also having um, two species like Hendra virus as well. So WHO, that is a World Health Organization, classifies as this Hendra virus as a biosafety level fourth threat. And here this is about this topic. And now let's try to see some important articles. So before that, I want to make a small announcement. So here we in Rathor says we came up with this PTS prelims test series for this 2023. And what are the questions we are providing here? It is of great standards. And we designed particularly the questions. Okay, and there is a one more thing here is practicing is very important to clear your prelims. So this is the first stage. If you clear this, you can have a chance of writing your means. So try to join this course and we are providing 30 tests along with GS and also CSAT. So this will be absolutely useful and the cost of this course here is just 3000 rupees for one year. And the links of this course is given in the description box and the timetable schedule etc. And if you want to join this course, you can visit our website there. You can click on the course list and you can do the payment for this course. And if you have any doubts, so please call me on this number 8074765513. Okay, so now let us move forward and let us try to see some more important articles that appeared in the other sources. Title says Hindu minority status, Supreme Court slammed government in May for changing stand. Now says no case clubs, please. please. So here we are going to talk about what is this minority status. So this is important from our GS paper to under quality point of view. So this topic is important from both your means and even prelims. So in prelims, you have to focus on the constitution status for these minorities. So now let us try to see why it is in news. So recently, Supreme Court pronounced that recognition of minorities at the district level is contrary to law. So we can't go for recognition of minorities at the district level. So if you see about these cases, so first case of Supreme Court here is Kerala Education Bill case of 1958. It is a very, very old case. Okay, this 1958. So the Kerala's Education Bill case of 1958, which rejected that minorities may, minorities be identified at the block or district level. And in 2008, that is a very recent, that is TMA Pi case. So it said that linguistic and religious minorities are determined by taking the state as a unit and it is not at a national level. At the state level, yes, we can go for identifying of this linguistic and uh, religious minorities. So, if we are talking about minorities in India, so yes, we have National Commission for Minorities Act of 1992 and under this, we are going for recognition of these minorities. And currently, those communities which are notified under this Section 2C of National Commission for Minorities Act of 1992 by the central government, they are regarded as minorities. Okay, Section 2C of National Commission for Minorities Act of 1992, they are mainly called as, uh, regarded as minorities. So, if you are talking about some examples, for example, Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Buddhists, Zoroastrians, that is Parsis and Jains in 2014, they have been notified as minority communities. And if you are talking about constitutional status, 
yes our constitution does not define the word minorities but there are some articles in our constitution which talks about this minorities so article 29 of indian constitution which talks about right to conserve distinct language script and culture right to conserve distinct language script and culture so it grants protection to both religious and also linguistic minorities okay so they grants protection to both religious as well as linguistic minorities and its scope it is not necessarily restricted to minorities only it is not only talking about minorities under this article 29 so if you see article 30 which talks about right to establish and administer education institutions of their choice so especially minority people they will have their own mother tongue right so here because of this here article 30 talks about right to establish and to administer education institutions of their choice and the protection under it is confined only to minorities okay and next one is article 350b so article 350 talks 350b talks about a special officer for linguistic minorities and this officer will be appointed by our president of india so now let us try to see the next topic it is regarding urban housing scheme that is pradhan mantri awas yojana urban so cabinet approves extension of urban housing scheme till 2024 so this article is important from your gs paper to under polity and governance and this topic will be important from your both mains and also prelims so from prelims you need to see some basic facts regarding this scheme that is pradhan mantri awas yojana So now let us try to see why it is in news. So Union Cabinet approved the extension of this flagship urban housing scheme, that is Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban, till this December thirty first, twenty twenty four. Okay, so till here thirty first December twenty twenty four. So here Union Cabinet took a decision that they are going to extend this Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana till twenty twenty four. So if you see details, it mainly says that. So this scheme has been launched in two thousand fifteen, and the original scheme, which mainly had some deadlines, okay, and this scheme which aimed for providing affordable housing with the incentives, okay, and this uh, scheme which mainly launched with an aim to achieve housing for all by twenty twenty two. We can achieve this housing for all by twenty twenty two. So if we're talking about five important features of this Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. So first one here is all weather housing units, and they need to have some basic facilities like water, kitchen, electricity, toilets, etc. And this one is it is also focusing on women empowerment. And third one here it is focusing on better quality of life for urban poor people, and it is also provide some security tenure also. And this Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, so it is going to provide some adequate physical and social infrastructure. So this is about this topic, and now let us move on to the next topic. it is regarding technology innovation hubs so here experts discussed best plans for indo us joint research projects and those projects to be implemented to this dhs that is technology innovation hubs so this topic is important from your science and technology from your gs paper 3 and this topic is important from your prelims point of view not from mains so now let us try to see this topic that is joint india us research projects will be implemented through this technology innovation hubs from now onwards so if you see some details it says that so it comes under this national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems okay icps so national mission on interdisciplinary cyber uh, physical systems so it is mainly uh, focusing on requisite infrastructure they are focusing on providing infrastructure for example test beds and data sets and they also helpful for the collaborations as well and even they are focusing on encouraging this exchange programs as well okay so next one here is so this an nmicps that is a national mission on interdisciplinary cyber uh, physical systems so they launched in year 2018 and for this five year period so we are going to enable some academia and as well industry government collaborations and we need to focus on especially technical support as well for the implementation and what are the activities are there so for example they focus on technology development human resources skill development entrepreneurship innovations and inter 
uh, international collaborations. So these are some important areas of focus of the activities. So if we are talking about this infographic, it mainly talks about this national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems. So first one here is it going to address increasing technical require technological requirements of society and it is focusing on 15 technology and 6 application innovation hubs and also 4 technology translation research hubs etc. And so here is the outlay here is the rupees. 3660 crore rupees and it is for the period of five years and it's focusing on accelerating or improving this entrepreneurship and to set up startup ecosystem as well so this is about this topic and now let's try to say today's prelims questions the first question is regarding so uh, among the following crops which one is the most important anthropogenic source of both methane and nitrous oxide so this question appeared in this upsc 2022 so option A is cotton, option B is rice, option C is sugarcane and option D is wheat. So correct option is rice. And this one here it is regarding Uday scheme, right? So which one of the following is the purpose of this Uday? Okay, it is a scheme of government and this question appeared in 2016. So whenever any scheme is there in news, yes, you have to know what is that scheme about and under which ministry it comes. So this will be important from your prelims point. Especially to say that only I selected this top, this question. So first option A is providing technical and uh, Financial assistance to startup and startup entrepreneurs okay, in the fields of renewable energy. Next one here is to provide electricity to every household. And this one here is replacing coal based power plants. And option D is to provide financial turn around and revival of the power distribution companies. So it is about this uh, power distribution companies to providing financial turn around and revival of power distribution companies okay so this is about this so today's prelims questions and now let us try to discuss what is the topic of the day so topic of the day it is from environment so we are going to talk about different trophic levels so trophic levels is very important to understand what is the food chain as well as what is the food web so first trophic level will we will be having primary producers that means they will utilize the sunlight and they will take the carbon dioxide and they will finally produce carbohydrates right so first level we have autotrophs or first primary producers and we are focusing on next level here is secondary primary consumers for example small small animals like ground squirrels and grasshoppers so and even you can talk about a goat a sheep so they are herbivores and this one here is this third or secondary consumers so this secondary consumers will be the primary carnivores and the fourth level we have this uh, fourth tertiary consumers so at that level we have the secondary carnivores like eagle like tiger lion okay big animals okay so this is about this trophic levels and this is one important topic from your environment and ecology which comes under your gs paper 3 and next vocabulary part so in this vocabulary i, I added two important things that is true true it is like a small insectivorous mammal and it is resembling like a mouse but it is having a very long pointed snout and very tiny eyes and it's very swart what means to prevent from accomplishing something okay so this is about this vocabulary part and i want to make a small announcement we in rathor says we came up with this foundation course for 2023 and 2024 and this course it is useful for both the beginners and already who gave the attempts so here we are providing like more than 600 hours of video classes and apart from that we are also providing you prelims test series and mains answer writing practice of one year which is a free of cost if you enroll into this foundation course and the validity of this foundation course here is two years so if you have any doubts you can call me on this number 8074765513 regarding this course and if you want to purchase this course you can go to or you can visit our website rathorsciencecademy.com there you can purchase this courses and if you want to get only single modules like only geography history ethics economy so you can take those single modules also and here i i am the key faculty of geography and ethics if you want to take those courses you can take those courses okay so if you have any doubt you can call me on this number or text me on this number on whatsapp so now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu. I hope you can see right. So the date here is August 12th and this is Delhi edition. 
So first article it is regarding JEM, okay, that, that is Jaisha, Jaisha Mohammed, Deputy Chief. I discussed this topic and you have to know about who is this Rauf Asghar. So after listening to this lecture, so if I ask who is this uh, uh, Rauf Asghar after two or three days, so you should not be have, you should not be have a blind face. Yes, you have to know he is a Deputy Chief of this Jaisha Mohammed. And this one here is four drowned, 17 missing after boat capsized in UV. Capsized means get into water right so there is a sinking of boat that happened so because of the sinking of water uh, sinking of boat in this uh, yamuna river water that led to death of many people and even many people they were missing so here you have to focus on this disaster disaster management aspects of this article and here you can see dunkar sworn as a vice president so actually here jagdeep dunkar he sworn as as 14th vice president of india okay and he took uh, he, he took his oath okay so because of this this is the news and if you move forward in the city page here you can see an article that is Jag, uh, Jagan, uh, Puri clash accused identified through facial recognition system so here you have to know about what is this facial recognition system and even in our mobile CS yes, we are using this facial recognition system to remove the log right so we are mainly using our face for the secret lock of our mobile so in the same way so what are the applications of this facial recognition system that you have to know for sure and try to do some research and try to write some uh, advantages of this facial recognition system and let me know in the comment box also and if you move forward In this third page there is nothing much and here in this fourth page here you can see one interesting image so that is a waterfall image so this waterfall is way sardong falls and is located in this chirapunji in meghalaya and it's when here is assam Arunachal pradesh so they are going to form panels to resolve the boundary issue or boundary dispute so i already discussed this topic and if you move forward you can directly move on to this uh, uh, states page page number eight so in this also there is nothing much important and uh, here and here in this uh, state page number nine here you can see nine indian fishermen they held by lankan navy so actually between this sri lanka and india and between this pakistan and india yes, we have one issue that is fisherman issue and if you move forward in this text and context i discussed about this criminal procedure identification act of 2022 and this article is talking about the representation of muslim characters so you can go through this once if you have time and in this page number 14 you can see there is one article that is india and bangladesh review this different relations during the meet so if you see here we are going to have this fourth india bangladesh annual defense dialogue okay we are going to have this on thursday okay so during which here two uh, sites they had been viewed regarding ongoing defense cooperation between these two countries and they express there is some what uh, satisfaction that there is a collaboration between these two countries so this is about this topic and if you move forward uh, here you can see break the illegal drug supply chain say stalin so here we need to focus on this what is illegal drug supply chain and what are the sub, uh, drug supply chains are present in the urban areas you have to know about that and here there is one more article in page number 16 that is drug shortage haunts HIV positive community. So when there is no proper availability of this drugs, yes, that will be having some impact on this HIV positive community. And if you move forward here, there is one more important, very important article that is youth employment decline in India says this ILO report. So ILO report says that youth employment had been declined. So India experienced severe working hour and employment losses in year 2020 and 2021 and Indian youth employment which had been determined in 2021 okay deteriorated in this 2021 when you are comparing with this 2020. So even global environment trends for youth 2022 report released by this international labor organization. So here it says that yes there is decreasing of employment in India. So here the recovery in this youth employment is still lagging globally. Okay, not only in India but also throughout the globe. Yes, there is some lag that is seen. 
so here this article says that the report says confirming that covid 19 has hurt hurt young people okay and more than and also more than any other uh, age group okay so there is a uh, increasing of unemployment at the scene and you can go to this article once and if you go through this world's paper so in this world paper here you can see russia is a state sponsor of terrorism so latvian parliamentarians they declared that russia is a state sponsor terrorism and those actions in the ukraine that constitute the target genocide against this uh, ukrainian people okay and the voting by 16 in favor and none against this uh, this latvia's legislation so mp's they said that they considered russia's violence against this civil uh, against the civilians in the pursuit of political aims and next up here is france it is also battling with wildfires in this bordesks and next topic it is about uh, langya virus detected in this shoes in china i discussed that topic and these are the some important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper so i hope you enjoyed this lecture so if you really like this video so please hit the like button and if you are new to our channel rathor sai academy so try to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that you will be getting get uh, regular notifications whenever we are uploading the video and one more thing here is if you want to get the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in the description box so by this i'm concluding thank you so much and have a nice day